Welcome. My name is Jeff Baird. I'm the interim chair of the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology here at UW Medicine. Uh, welcome to the clinical laboratories. We, this is one of our clinical laboratories spread out amongst many different sites around Seattle as part of UW Medicine. We have about 150 faculty and about 1,500 staff that are doing millions of tests a year for the Seattle region, UW Medicine, and actually all around the country. And of late, uh, I'm sure you're all aware, starting in March, we've also been doing the majority of all of the COVID testing in the Seattle region and actually for King County and a lot of Washington State. Uh, what next I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce Dr. Keith Jerome, who is the division head of virology here and the director of the laboratory. And he's going to show us the uh, uh, laboratory here around us and where we uh, do all the different types of virology testing uh, that are done in the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology. Hi, I'm Keith Jerome. I'm the head of University of Washington Virology. And it's a pleasure to give you a tour about our virology lab and where we do so much testing. What you're seeing now is the laboratory that we had before COVID uh, that we've expanded tremendously to do so much testing we need to do now. Testing starts here. This is where clinical specimens come in. They get logged into these computers and set into our information system so that we can do the testing. You see we have three stations here now You'll see downstairs, we, we've built about 30 more of these so that we can do enormous amounts of testing going forward for COVID. Now I'm going to show you where we actually pull the nucleic acids out of the virus. Remember, the nucleic acid, RNA or DNA, is the stuff of life that makes up these viruses, and that's what we actually detect. So the first thing you have to do is pull it out from the way the virus packages that up, and we use these instruments. They're actually all robotic. Everything happens automatically. Come on, let's take a look at another one. This one's actually um, doing some of the testing now and you can see things moving around. All this can happen and allow our medical laboratory scientists to go off and do other tasks to just get as many tests through as we possibly can so that we can help as many people as we can. Once we have the RNA out of the virus, we bring it into this room. And what we do here is actually amplify it. This is where the PCR or polymerase chain reaction happens, where we take a small portion of the virus and if we can find it, we make that one copy of virus into thousands and then millions. And once we do that, we can actually detect it using instruments like this. And if these curves on these lines actually come up rapidly, we can tell that the virus is there. We can also tell how much virus is there. So this is really where we take all those thousands of specimens we have, find the vast majority which are negative for COVID and find those few that are positive. When we do find those positives, they go into our sequencing effort so that we can find out exactly what that virus is made of. So I want to take you down and look at that and let you talk to Pavitra Rashadri, who will show you how that really works. Thanks, Keith. Hi, my name is Pavitra Roy Chaudhry, and I lead the genomics and bioinformatics arm of the University of Washington Virology Lab, where we're focused on sequencing SARS-CoV-2 and other pathogens. Once we have a sample that is positive for SARS-CoV-2, the next step is to determine the genetic sequence of the virus in that sample. And that is what we do here in this lab. Uh, over here is our lead scientist, Hong Xie. What she's doing here is preparing sequencing libraries uh, that are obtained from the samples. And those libraries are going to go on one of our three sequencing instruments on this side. Once the sequencing instruments have run, they uh, generate a lot of data and that data has to be analyzed and I write computer programs to extract the genetic sequence of SARS-CoV-2 from those large data sets. Once we have those uh, sequences, uh, what I try to do is then upload those to public databases so that they can be made available to scientists around the world. And next up, you'll hear from Alex Greninger who will give you a tour of our dedicated COVID testing facility. Thanks, Pavitra. So I'm Alex Greninger. I'm the assistant uh, director here in the clinical virology lab at the University of Washington Medical Center. Um, here is our receiving and uh, logging in area for our new floor. It's our entirely new floor of just for COVID. This is our COVID lab. We run about 7,000 samples a day through here now. Um, you saw what it was like upstairs. Now you can see down here from the second floor. So this particular uh, uh, setting, we receive samples in these boxes, unbox them, and then move them into different tiers and buckets. So depending on where the sample's coming from and when it, what, what kind of turnaround time it needs. Uh, and then, so these go into these buckets and then get processed during the day. So over here is where we do our processing 
uh, accessioning of samples. So if you come on in here, you can see upstairs we used to have only three spots where we would uh, be able to receive samples. Now we have sort of more than 30 across the entire area where we can log in samples. You can see all of them. It's a part of laboratory medicine that people don't talk about. People are very focused on the analytical portion. This is the pre-analytical portion where you have to make sure you have a order for a test, you have the right sample, the right time, you're gonna be, the, the result's going to mean something. And we have to be able to transmit that result. So that all has to be logged in, make sure everything's correct before it goes to the instruments. So we don't get to control how the samples come in, taking all those samples every day. And we have many different platforms that we run. So we have to move the samples from the tubes that, the tubes that are collected into, into tubes that can run on the instruments. And so that's what we do here. So if you come in here, you can see we're logging in those samples. And then when we get to this room, we are uh, decanting them, actually, from one tube into the next, one tube into the next. It's a very manual process, but it's very important to be able to run all the samples. So then the samples have to go on many different instruments. For instance, here we have the Pelagic Panthers, uh, which are actually widely across the United States. There are over 1,000 of these. Uh, these run on transcription media amplification. They can run each one of the instruments can run 1,000 samples in a day. So these are uh, the Alinity M uh, instruments from Abbott. They are very new. Um, we're just starting to get them running here. And uh, they also can do about 800 to 1,000 a day, each one of these instruments. Um, these really have only been authorized for HIV and SARS-CoV-2 testing. So they're very new. Uh, they've been out in Europe for several years. But here in the United States, they really just came out from the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. So this is the uh, Roche Coas 6800. We have two of these instruments. These guys are very high throughput. Uh, they do a lot of samples uh, very quickly in a highly batched fashion. So 90 samples at a time will come on over here on this track and be taken to this side where they get uh, moved into different tubes. And then on a different track over here, where they get extracted and run the PCR. Same thing as the LDT, just all sample to answer. You just load the samples on the instrument, and then the instrument will, will give the result out. And at that, point, that, at that point, it's down to the informatics folks, who basically are a huge part of the laboratory to make sure that we can get these samples, these results, out to individuals. Um, so from the pre-analytical to the post-analytical, they're involved through everything we do. And that's the University of Washington Virology Lab that we built in the last six months. Thanks to Pavitra, Keith, and Jeff for a great tour. And now we got to get back to it. All right, so GCLP week. Uh, yes. Got to make the sequencing protocols, finishing the validation on those.